For the past two years, I'm following a scientific method which I used to memorize all of my subjects at IIT Madras. And the best part is this system helps me remember all the information by studying once. So in this video, we'll talk about one minute method which helped me to develop a photographic memory. Plus, we'll talk about simple and easy to apply memory techniques used by memory champions to memorize impossible information. So that you can memorize the first hundred digits of pi. So that any student or competitive exam aspirant can use it to become a memory pro. Hi, by the way, if you're new here, I'm Raghuram Chandrakumar and I'm Tech alumni of IIT Madras. Now, how to create a memory so good that you can study once and remember forever? Let me explain. How many of you here are hostlers who never miss going home on weekends? I was one of those guys during my BTEC. So few years back, for a weekend, I booked a train to home. And I was little late on that day, but still decided to go to railway station from college by bus. And you know, local bus is probably not the fastest mode of transport. So there was a tension that I might miss my train. And just before five minutes of train time, the bus approaches the railway station. But there is a distance between the railway station entrance and the bus stop and I don't have the time for me to drop at the bus stop and catch the train. So while the bus was going itself, I decided to jump off and I jumped down. Why? Because I didn't consider inertia. So I started slipping forward the moment my both feet hits the ground and there was a rod at 45 degree angle in the direction I'm slipping. But luckily, I'm able to stop myself inches before it. Had it, I dropped off five seconds later then. Fast forward to eight years later, I didn't remember what I had in my bag. I didn't remember what time was my train. But I remember every scenes of me jumping off and stopping near the iron rod. Why my brain remembers only that? Because our brain remembers the information that is important for our survival. My brain now knows that if I simply jump off, I'll most probably die. You might ask me, Raghu, how do I remember if information isn't life or death related? Luckily, just how our brain loves survival information, it also likes to store other information. Using that, we are going to develop our photographic memory system. Before finding out how to develop a photographic memory, I want to share something helpful for JE Main 2025 aspirants. If you are preparing for JE Mains, you might face a lot of challenges like backlogs, low scores and tests, and lack of guidance. This is where Photo Club will help you. Photo Club is a community of JE toppers and aspirants. Their team of IIT, NIT and Bits Topper had made a product that is more than a JE main test series. Where they offer 20 full syllabus mock tests, most predicted partial and chapter wise tests, 150 plus previous year papers as mock tests, plus mentorship by IIT and NIT students. The top 100 performers in Photo Club's JE test series can win scholarship and prizes like MacBook, iPhones, Amazon vouchers. If you just want great practice material, you can take the ultimate JE main test series. In 2024, 1250 plus students of photo club joined IITs, NITs and Bits Piloni. Now it's your turn. Use the code Raghuram20 for a 20% scholarship to join photo club. Now how to develop a photographic memory? There are three elements for developing it. First element. To understand it, we need to do a small game. I'll ask one question and you have to pause this video, note down the answer, then watch this video. The question is, write three best memories of your life. I bet all those events that you have written, you are remembering it vividly because it makes you feel emotional in some way. So first rule, make it emotional. Number two, if you look at our ancestors, they actually had no need to remember numbers, names and all. But they had to remember how to get back to home after a three day deer hunt. Because of these survival needs, we built a superior visual and memory system. So rule number two, make it visual. Now, if you feel this information is awesome, then subscribing this channel would be more awesome. Third element, Dr. Son Kang, who is a cognitive psychologist and the professor at University of Melbourne, in his research found out that brain remembers information that is of importance to us. Now, the question is how brain decides which information is important. One of my friend, he actually forgets his girlfriend's birthday. I just know something bad is going to happen. So how? The way brain decides an information important to us based on three factors. Value, relation, repetition. Value. How many of you here agrees that our mom is the best doctor in the world? I've been personally been hospitalized and been under the care of expert doctors, but I never been went to hospital 98% of the time because of my mom. Not only our mom gave us healthy and nutritious food, but most of the time my mom has solutions to symptoms in my body. When I have a fever, my mom will make some medicine using leaves and gives it to me. When I have some stomach pain, she will make some soup using some leaves and give it to me. And the reason she was able to tell many things is she remembers the medical advice 
stories of other people. What's notable here is my mom doesn't take notes of anything. Why is it so? Because for mom, taking care of their family's health is of prime importance. Hence, her brain knows this information is valuable. Relation. I'm someone who is passionate about self-development, career growth. So whenever I come across a good information, I'll remember it. So the second factor, brain understand a particular information is meaningful is association. Third, reputation. I actually know my credit card details very well, be it the card number, CVV, the expiry date. The reason is credit cards have reward system. It will reward you for your spends. And based on the type of credit card, you can use those reward points for free hotel bookings or buying stuffs for free in Flipkart or Amazon. So whenever there is an opportunity for me to use my credit card, I'll use it. Because of my repeated inputs whenever I need, I remembered it. So the third factor brain understands that an information is important is repetition. So rule number three, make it important now using these three rules we are going to develop our photographic memory system which hardly takes around one minute per information to build it. so how to do that the three steps are information translation and representation so it will be like the information goes onto your head then you translate it into the real world and you represent it in real life so how to do that step one grab an index card step two title what you want to remember step three fill the card with information about the subject and make it sound personal even informal if if it actually sounds like your textbook passage, then actually you have failed. Step four, write your own personal connection. Once your brain recognizes what you wrote is important, it sticks. Also in place of personal connection, I write examples. And if the example is of having more value than a personal emotional incident, then I was able to remember it more. Step five, draw picture. This is final thing to remember literally anything you write down by drawing the subject of the note. It can't remain abstract. The idea is able to be visualized and the representation of the information can stay in your brain. Now the purpose of this video is to help any competitive exam aspirant to become a pro when it comes to remembering a lot of information. Hence this video is incomplete. Why? Sumit Bambu, IIT Bombay alumni, gate all in the rang 1 in mechanical. He actually finished gate 30 minutes before actual time. And for mechanical stream, finishing before 30 minutes is very difficult but how he was able to finish it the primary reason is he memorizes most of the calculation one fine example is if you look at mechanical subjects there will be a lot of formulas where area will come so instead of every time inputting the values in the calculator to find the area values he memorizes the most frequent area values by doing that he was able to save at least 5 to 10 seconds for each problem so for these and many other aspects the above photographic memory systems appear impractical so here are five practical evidence-based memory techniques to become a pro in memory number one i told you in the beginning that for our ancestors there is no need for them to remember numbers rather they need to remember places because of that we biologically have outstanding visual and spatial memory systems that's why when we see someone after a long time we'll say oh i have seen you somewhere what's your name again so associating what you are trying to remember with a memorable visual image will help you remember better let's take a simple example where you want to remember f is equal to ma you can remember it by this image which is actually a flying mouse in an airplane so first memory technique is use memorable visual image second let's say you want to remember a number like this how can you do it easily chunking Chunking is a technique that involves grouping related information together in chunks so here you can divide this number into two dates 23 7 19 12 11 3 20 24 now you have to memorize only two days so second memory technique is chunking third to understand that we'll take the previous two dates and how can you remember it more easier stories like i came up with a story 23 is lebron james so lebron james just invited 07 mahendra singh dhoni and 19 abd willis for his son's 12th birthday but his teammate number 11 Kyrie Irving for his daughter's third birthday invited 20 male cricketers and 24 female cricketers bang so third memory technique is create a story now fourth to understand that we need to understand our major memory systems scientifically speaking we have two major memory systems one is the working memory and another one is the long term memory short term memory is like a temporary storage in our brain it holds small amounts of information for a small period for example when you look up at otp and remember it just long enough to dial it that short term memory at work on the other hand think of long term memory as a storeroom in your brain where if you keep an information it will be there forever example our mobile number 
that we repeat in such a way that we'll remember it forever. So what is the most effective way to keep information in long-term memory? That's where our fourth scientific method comes in. Hermann Ebbinghaus, a German psychologist, developed the forgetting curve. With the days in x-axis and memory in y-axis, he found out that when he first studies an information, brain starts forgetting very faster. But if we study it after an initial interval, the information starts forgetting in a much slower pace. Likewise, if we keep studying after increased intervals, soon it will be in your long-term memory where you will never forget. So fourth memory technique, spaced repetition. And the fifth memory technique is how many of you here when you revise a subject, open the book and start rereading it again. Wrong wrong. Scientifically, our brain will fool us when we reread, but that's actually not true. As Richard Feynman, Nobel Prize winning physicist mentions, the first principle is that you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. The way a brain works is you learn better and remember more when you try to take the information. They all became masters by doing the input and more of the out. Out of it. So instead of rereading, the most effective approach for revision is active recall. Whenever you are revising a subject just close the notebook try to recollect the information from your brain and then if you can't able to recollect it then open the book and study it that's the best technique so fifth memory technique active recall now how many of you here actually feel you are an average student who feels no matter what you can't improve your memory fine i'll ask you a question did you have a girlfriend what what the fuck? i didn't and i know one of my friends he's an iitian he had and one day he actually forgot his girlfriend's birthday I just know something bad is going to happen. Mistake, big mistake. I was eagerly waiting from 11.45 p.m. to expect a call from my friend, but till they meet morning 9 a.m., he didn't visit it. And you know what will happen next. So the very next moment, he noted her birthday in calendar and from thereafter, for every birthday, he wishes 10 minutes before 12 a.m. on her birthday. But I know another guy, his name's Joshopher. Not Joshopher, Joshopher. He is worse than my friend in memory. You don't believe me? He even forgets where he placed his room keys. He forgets the food he kept in the oven and also he forgets his girlfriend's birthday. And there is only one thing we say to death. Not today. But Joseph Ur decides to change in a different way. How? After a few years, Power won USA Memory Championship, sets a US record in speed cards event by memorizing a deck of 52 cards in 1 minute 40 seconds, and the author of best selling book Moonwalking with Einstein. The reason I told this whether you think you have a good memory or not, you can actually develop a good memory if you follow right scientific methods. So believe. But there is one factor that will kill your results in memory no matter how much you try, which is sleep deprivation. So how to sleep well despite having a heavy schedule and all of this can be rightly planned and executed if you have a scientifically correct daily routine. So if you want to find out the best scientific daily routine for your competitive exam, check out this video. But I see the light from far away, it's down the line, maybe I should not give up without a fight.